All right, so we're going through adding and subtracting polynomials here, as well as multiplying and dividing in some of these questions. So remember, adding polynomials, we're going to just write in standard form. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, okay? So you can kind of drop the parentheses if they're there. You're going to add like terms, so they have to have the same exponent and the same letters. So same letters, same exponent. You add them. So uh, remember, if they're both positive, you add, or both negative, you add them and keep the sign. If they're different signs, you subtract and keep the sign of the large number. All right, subtracting polynomials, what we're going to do is we're going to change it to an addition problem. We're basically going to distribute the negative 1, okay? Remember, there's always a minus a 1 with the negative here. And then we're going to change it to a, a plus problem, and then we drop the parentheses, and then we just combine like terms again, okay? When you're multiplying and dividing them, remember, we're going to take the number in front, and we're going to distribute that through. So when we multiply, remember we multiply the coefficients and then we add the exponents here. So for 366, um, we're gonna, it says which polynomial is twice the sum. So it means we have to do sum, which means add first, okay? So if I add negative six X squared plus X minus four, and I'm gonna add these, okay? So different signs here, we're gonna subtract, so which is negative two X squared. These x's are going to cancel and give me 0, and I get left with negative 3. So which is twice of that, so then if I multiply that result by 2, right, we're going to get negative 6 and then negative 4x squared. And so we got choice 3. Okay. Right next door, we, want to, we know if a um, is this, b is that, a minus b equals. So we want to write it with parentheses. So 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 minus, and then negative 2x squared, minus 6x, and then plus 7. So we're going to put the 1 in front of the minus sign here, and we're going to distribute, okay? So we drop the parentheses and get 3x squared, minus, uh, plus 5x, minus 6, and then it's plus 2x squared, okay, plus 6x, minus 7. And then we combine like terms. So these 3x squared and a 2x squared give me 5x squared. And we want standard form, so highest exponent first. You got this plus 5x and plus 6x, which is plus 11x. And then we have the minus 6 and minus 7, which is minus 13. And so you can see that's going to be choice 2. All right, for the next one, we have c, which is 2a squared minus 5, d, and we want to do c minus 2d. So we're basically going to set that up. c is 2a squared minus 5 minus 2 times d which is 3 minus a so remember order of operations we're going to distribute the negative 2 through first so the 2a squared minus 5 is going to come along for the ride negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 negative 2 times a is positive 2a and then the like terms so 2a doesn't have 2a squared doesn't have any like terms so it stays the same there's also no like terms with 2a and then negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. So 2a squared minus 2a, wait a minute, Ooh, plus 2a, plus 2a. You can see that there wasn't a minus 2a, so I must have done something wrong. And there we go, minus 11. <clears throat> Subtract 5x squared plus 2x minus 11 from, so when it says from, that means that this is first, okay? Uh, actually, do that back first. So what it means is when it says from, it's taking this away from that. That means that this goes first. So when I think about this, this is the first term, okay? And this is the second one I'm subtracting. So it's going to be like if we do a minus b, okay? This is the a and this is the b here, okay? So it's 3x squared plus 8x minus 7, take away with parentheses, 5x squared plus 2x minus 11. Distribute the negative sign in front, so 3x squared plus 8x minus 7 minus 5x squared minus 2x plus 11, and then we combine like terms. So we got the 3x squared and the negative 5x squared, different signs we subtract to keep the larger sign. Same thing with 8x and the 2x, we subtract, keep the larger sign, and then same thing with the negative 7 and 11, subtract. Keep the larger sign. And there is my trinomial. On to page two. Multiplying. So same thing we talked about when we multiply. 
Um, we're also, if you have two or three terms, we're just going to take the first term in the first parentheses. We're going to distribute that through. And then we're going to take the second term and we're going to distribute that through. And then we're going to combine like terms at the end. Okay. So if we're doing area, remember area is equal to length times width for this question. Okay. Uh, we know that the length is 2x minus 6. So we put parentheses around it. And then 3x minus 5. And then we distribute. So 2x goes first. That's 2 times 3. So we multiply the coefficients. That's 6. And add the exponents. x squared. 2x times negative 5 is minus 10 of an x. Six, negative 6 and 3 is negative 18x. And negative 6 and negative 5 is plus 30. And then we're going to combine like terms. The only like terms are in the middle there. So it's 6x squared minus 28x and then plus 30. And so we know we get our answer. Standard form, so product once again, so x plus 5. It's kind of easier to put the smaller one in front, by the way, the one with less terms. Okay, and then we distribute them. So the x goes first. So 2x times squared times x is 2x cubed. x times 7x is plus 7x squared. And x times negative 10 is negative 10x. And then the 5, so it's just 5 times 2 is 10, and the x squared stays. Okay. 5 times 7 is 35 with the x. And then we have 5 times 10, negative 10, which is negative 50. We'll just put a line there. So combine like terms. There are no other 2x or cubes besides 2x cubed. We got some x squareds here. So add and keep the variable. We subtract. So positive because the bigger number is positive. And then take away 50. And there we go. There's standard form. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> The difference is multiplied. What's the result? It's the same thing we're going to subtract first. So here we can just put the negative 1 through. So we get 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. And then switch the signs. So negative x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then we'll multiply that after we're done. So combine like terms. Okay. So 3x squared minus x squared is minus 2x squared. Remember the 1 in front here. We have a negative 2x and a negative 3x, which is minus 5x, because they're the same sign, and then 7. And then we'll multiply through by 1 half x squared. So we're taking half of the number, and then we're adding the exponents. So half of 2 is 1, and x squared times x squared, we add the exponents x to the fourth. Half of 5 is like negative 2.5, and x squared times x is x cubed, and half of 7 is sort of 3.5. And now we have an x squared attached. You also could leave this as negative 5 over 2 and uh, 7 over 2. So if you want to fraction, you're more than welcome to. And then same thing, key thing here is standard form. We distribute. So that's 5x plus 8x cubed plus 28x squared. Okay. And then minus 6x squared. And minus 9x. So I'm only distributing to the numbers in the parentheses, and then we're doing standard form. So there's no other x cubes. That goes first. We have some x squares, and they're different signs. So we subtract and keep the sign of the larger number. And we have some x's. So subtract once again, keep the sign of the larger number. And there is our polynomial. All right. Well, look. Okay, so the next thing we're doing is some factoring. So remember for GCF, we're always looking for GCF first. We want to figure out the largest monomial that can be um, factored, can be a factor of all the terms. So it's the biggest number that divides into that evenly for each term. And then we're going to divide by the GCF. And then we're going to do the GCF first parentheses. And then the quotient gets left inside. Remember, we should be able to distribute back through and end up with our original term. Okay, if there's binomials, we're looking for difference of perfect squares. So these numbers have to be perfect squares. Okay, so it's got to be like 4, um, 9, 16, 25, and it also has to be letters with even exponents. Okay, um, and then if they are and you're minusing, you can break it down into two parentheses. Okay, 1 plus 1 minus. And then we're doing the square root of the first term goes in the front, okay? And the square root of the second term goes in the back, okay? 
So remember, square the first term in the front, square the second term in the back, and we should be good to go. For trinomials with coefficient of 1, remember we can use our diamond, so a times c on the top, b on the bottom. And then for the bottom, I know they kind of do it this way. We did ours with the box, okay? We're going to do ax squared in the front, we're going to do c in the back, and then you're using your two numbers from your diamond in here, and you're going to do your GCFs. So let's get to it. 3 to 5. First thing to look for is the GCF. Notice they all have an x, so we can take an x out. And then I'm left with x squared minus 13x, okay, minus 30. And then I can pop out my diamond. I wanted to multiply to negative 30, so that's the last number and the first number, which is a 1 here. Okay, and I want to add or subtract to give me negative 13. So the numbers that multiply to 30 are 1 and 30, 2 and 15, right, 5 and 6. And we can see if I use the 15 and the 2, the negative 15 in the work. So now I keep the x around. I do two parentheses for what's in the middle here, okay? And I do x in the front, and then negative 15, and positive 2. All right, so that's how I know what that answer is. All right, the second one, uh, if we do difference of perfect squares, all right? Now you can see in there here, they did not do any GCFs. So I know that I don't have to do any GCFs, okay? So the square root of each term, all right, is what we want to do. So the square root of 16x to the fourth is 4x squared, and the square root of 64 is 8. So I know I'm going to do two parentheses, the 4x squared in the front. I do different signs, and then the 8 goes in the back, okay? And so that is what this is going to be. For 387, same thing, three terms, okay? The linear coefficient is 1, so I'm going to do my... Uh, diamond, and then the factors are 64. 64 and 1 doesn't work, right? 32 and 2 doesn't work. 3 doesn't even go into it. 4 goes into it 16 times, and you can see I can get 12 from 4 and 16. So I know I want a negative 16 and a 4, okay? And then I'm going to do my parentheses, m in front, minus 16, and then m plus 4, all right? For 391, same thing, two terms, the difference in perfect squares. So I'm going to take the square root. This becomes y squared and 10. Okay, so two parentheses, y squared in the front because it's the first term, minus 10, and y squared in the front, plus 10. All right. Page four, yo. Same thing. Now, this one does not have a GCF and it has a number in front. So I'm going to do my diamond, and I see it's going to be 3 times negative 8, which is negative 24, and I get negative 10. So uh, the only way to get negative 24 in a negative 10 is either to use 6 and 4, where both numbers are negative. That'll give me negative 10, but it gives me a positive 24, so this doesn't work. Or I use a negative 12 and a 2. This will give me negative 24 and negative 10. Okay, so I know that this does work. So I'm going to do a box, okay, with the first term and the last term in the box. So I know it's 3x squared, and it's minus 8. And then I'm going to put the negative 12x in one of them and a 2x in the other. And I do my GCFs. So going across, okay, from left to right, all right, and then I'm going to go top to bottom. That's how I'm looking at the GCFs here. So 3x squared and 12x have a 3x in common, and it's positive because my first box here is positive. 2x and negative 8 have a 2 in common, and the same thing is positive. Okay, 3x and 2x have an x in common, and 8 and 12 have a 4 in common, but it's a minus. So it's 3x plus 2, and then x minus 4, so it's choice 1. Okay, same thing, 2 times is a minus, so I know I'm doing difference of perfect squares. 36x squared is 6x, 100 is 10, okay? Now, technically, what I should be doing before I do that is check the GCF. So even though that it would factor like this, I can see these have a GCF, so I want to know what's the GCF of the numbers here. Now, remember, your calculator would do that for you. So if you take your calculator out, okay, new document, don't want to save, open a calculator page and go to menu, okay? 
number, and you can see it says greatest common divisor. And then I put those numbers in. So it's 36 and then comma 100. And it tells me it's 4. So I know I can take a GCF of 4 out. And then 4 into the 36, if I divide it, is 9. And then 4 into 100 divided in leaves me 25. And so now the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 25 is 5. And then 3x plus 5. All right, and there is my answer. All right, factor completely. So these ones are a little bit tougher because there's an exponent other than two, it's four. So technically, it's just like we did before, right? And I would do x and x, except now in order to get x squared, x to the fourth, I need x squared and x squared. So the fourth power is just gonna use x squared instead of x's. Same deal though, negative seven in the top, six in the bottom, okay? So I know I want a 7 and a negative 1. We'll multiply to give me negative 7, add to 6. So it's x squared plus 7 and x squared minus 1. Now because it says factor completely, I want to check to see if either of these can factor again. And indeed, the x squared minus 1 is a difference of perfect squares. So x squared plus 7 doesn't change, but x squared minus 1 is x minus 1 and then x plus 1. Okay. The same thing on the next one, so x to the fourth. So I know that I'm going to do my diamond. I'm going to do 36 and negative 12, and then 36. This is a little tougher, so 36 and 1 doesn't work. 2 and 18 doesn't work. 3 and 12, but that doesn't work either. Okay, um, and then we can keep going. So what I should notice is that 6 and 6 will work, right? 4 and 9 does, 6 and 6 does. And I need them both negative to add a negative 12 and, and multiply to positive 36. So x squared in the first one, okay? And then both minus sixes in there, and there we go. All right, which function has zeros of negative four and two? Now on a graph, right, the zeros occur where these hit the x-axis. So you can see the zeros here would be negative 2 and 4, but that's not what we're looking for. This would be negative 4 and 2, so this is what we're looking for. This is going to factor, right, into x uh, minus 8 and x plus 1, which actually means that the zeros are going to be 8, right, and negative 1. Okay, it's the opposite side of the factors. And this guy is going to factor into x plus 8 and x minus 1, and so this factors are going to be negative 8 and positive 1. So I know it's going to be choice 4, okay? So the point negative on the next graph, we have the graph drawn. The point's negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 0. 0, negative 4. And 4, 0 all lie on the graph. Which of these points can determine the zeros of the equation? Okay, so the zeros, remember, are located where it crosses the x-axis here. So the two numbers I'm looking for are for a, because this is negative 2, 0, and c, where 4, 0 is. So b is not in the equation. So it's a and c only, okay? All right. Uh, which functions of the polynomial are negative 4 and negative 6? Now remember, that means that if x minus 4, if x is equal to negative 4, okay? Let's go actually think about in terms of solving our quadratic equation, okay? I know that I'm supposed to start with a quadratic equation. If you think of it, I end with x is equal to negative 4, right? And x is equal to negative 6. So what would the line right before this be? It's supposed to be equal to 0, so think about if you move the 4 back to this side, that would be x plus 4 equals 0, right? And if I move the 6 over here, that would be x plus 6 is equal to 0. And right before this, we would have our factored form where we have this, right? x plus 4 times x plus 6, okay, is equal to 0. And so if I were to go back another step, I would actually have distributed, right, to get there. So x times x is x squared x times 6 is plus 6x, 4 times x is plus 4x, oh, forgot the x's, 
Okay. I'm just going to undo this just so that it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay. So 6x plus 4x, and then 6 times 4 is 24. And so if we add these together, we should get 10. So it's x squared plus 10x plus 24. And there's my answer. Okay. Here are the zeros. So we can even solve this by factoring, right? We can take a GCF out of 2 first because there's a 2. And then I get x squared divided into 2. 2 divided into negative 4 is negative 2x. 2 divided into negative 6 is negative 3. And then if I'm doing zeros, that means this is equal to 0. So can I factor the inside still? What multiplies to give me negative 3 and adds a negative 2? If you said negative 3 and 1, you're right. Okay, so this is going to become 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay. So now when I'm doing this, I know that I'm going to set each equal to 0. The 2 can't equal 0, so that's out. If x minus 3 is equal to 0, that means the, the root there is 3. And if x plus 1 equals 0, then the root is negative 1. So my two solutions are 3 and negative 1. You also could just graph this and check where it crosses the x-axis, right? So I'm going to add a new page, type in a graph. Okay, 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. So this is minus 6, there we go. Okay, and then I can just check the roots. Negative 1, positive 3. All right? Also, to find the roots on the graph, you can press Menu, Analyze Graph, and you can go to 0, and then you can scan over and see negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right, the zeros of the function are, same thing, right? Type it in the graph or factor. Now this we want to get in a standard form first. So we can do 2x squared, right, minus 10x. And actually this is cubed, x squared, plus 12x. Okay, we're going to set it equal to 0 to find the zeros. And then I can factor out a GCF. They all have a... 2x in common, and that means if I take a 2x out of 2x cubed, I get left with x squared. 2x away out of the 10x, negative 10x squared is 5x, and 2x out of the 12x is 6. And so what factors to give you 6 when you multiply it, and negative 5, right, positive 6, so that's going to be 3 and 2, and both negative, so 0 equals 2x, and then x minus 3, and x minus 2. All right. And then we're going to do each of them equal to 0. So if 2x is equal to 0, that means that x has to equal 0. If x minus 3 is equal to 0, that means that x is equal to 3. And if x minus 2 is equal to 0, that means x is equal to 2. All right. So my solutions are 0, 2, and 3. All right, which polynomial function contains the factor? So if these are the factors, then the roots are when you set them equal to zero. Okay. So if x minus 2, that means that the solution is going to be, if it's equal to uh, x minus 2 equals zero, that means the solution is going to be 2. And if x plus 5 is equal to zero, that means the solution is going to be negative 5. So I want to find coordinates here where it's crossing the x-axis at zero, right? So this is zero. That's not zero. This is zero. At two, well, that's this one, right? And then negative five, right? These are switched. This is negative two and positive five. So I know it's just going to be one only. So when you're doing these type of questions, where it could be one only, two and three, go through and see which answers are right. And if you've got ones that are wrong, you can kind of cross them off. And just kind of... All right, which represents the graph below? So Two things you can do. Number one, we can graph them all, right? And number two, we can build the equation, okay? So remember, if this is negative two, x is equal to negative two, that means the factor is x plus two, okay? And that's the factor. If x is equal to one, that means the factor is x minus one. And if the factor is three, if the root is three, then the factor is x minus three, okay? So two options I could have. I could have x plus 2, right, times x minus 1, times x minus 3, 
And when you distribute these two together, right, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x plus 3. But, like, that's not an option, okay? So what if I combine these two together? Well, that's x squared, right, minus x minus 2, or plus x. It is plus x because it's positive 2 and then negative 1. And then times would be x minus 3. So, like, this works, okay? And if I combine the x plus 2 times x minus 3, I'm going to get x squared. Okay. And then positive 2x and negative 3x is minus 1x. And 2 times negative 3 is minus 6. Okay. So that doesn't work, right? Because that's minus 5. And I should have a minus 1. So it's 2 only. Okay. All right, and what you could have done, right, is actually go graph it. So if we graph number three, okay, so we do menu, not menu, tab, arrow up, control delete, we get rid of that, okay, and then it's x minus one times x squared, and I believe it's minus five x, right, minus six, and so. Does this match that graph? See how this is not right at the y-axis, but this one's on it. So we can see it's off a little bit. All right, same thing here. You can just use your graph. You can type them in and see which equation you're going to get. And then here is another great example. My roots here, right, are negative 3. So that means my factor is x plus 3. Okay, here it's 2. So my factor is x. I remember, if this is positive 2, okay, Uh, pause it while this, there we go. So if this is positive 2, then it's x minus 2 as a factor. And if this is positive 4, okay, then it's x minus 4 as a factor. So it should be x plus 3, x minus 2, and x plus 4, or x minus 4. So we have choice 4. Also, it's only crossing three times. So I shouldn't have four factors, okay? Keep that in mind as you're all in there. And then same thing here, right? This cross is at, looks like negative 4, so that factor is x plus 4. This factor is at negative 2, so that means it's x plus 2. And this factor is at 1, which means it's x uh, minus 1, if it's positive 1. So I know that it's got to have an x plus 2. So it's this one's out, and that one's out. And then I have to just do is multiply x plus 4 times x minus 1, and we're going to get x squared. Right, this is 4x and negative 1x, so that's plus 3x, and 4 times negative 1 is minus 4. And so then I know I have choice 1 and not choice 4 because of the signs. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Hope you guys learned some stuff here. I'll see you guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the weather. I'll see you on Monday.